How to achieve financial independence. Financial independence is the ability for you to sustain your desired lifestyle without a paycheck, where the income that you are using to sustain that lifestyle is coming from your personal resources. These are investments that you have done that are generating the income that sustains your lifestyle. So you can say you are financially independent if income that comes from your personal resources, your investments, is more than how much you need to sustain your life. Why do we need to talk about financial independence? Let's say today, your annual expenditure is 52,000 Ghana cities and your income for your investment is zero. Now, what this means is that the entire 52,000 cities needs to be funded from a paycheck. Your expenditure, 52,000. Income from assets, zero. Now, how are you going to finance the 52,000? From blood, from sweat, from tears, because you hate what you're doing, but you have to get up and go and do it because without that, you're going to start. You borrow money and then you are buried under a heap of debt. So that is the picture that some of you will have today. And it's okay if that's your picture today. But three years from from today, I expect to see a picture that looks like this. Your annual expenditure, of course, is going to go up. Your annual expenditure goes to 70,000. But now, the income that is coming from your assets is 25,000. So the gap that needs to be funded is 45,000. So you would realize that your income is more than the gap that you need to fund your excess expenditure. So there's still a gap to be funded. But now it is with a lot more joy because the plan is working. All of a sudden you realize that your asset is generating 30% of your expenditure. It's not bad. You started from somewhere it's growing. So uh, on your way to financial freedom, so there's a lot more joy and a lot more purpose. Three years down the line, your annual expenditure is 108,000 cities. But your income for your assets is 150,000 cities. What is the gap that you need to fund? So at this point, we say that you are financially independent because your assets are generating more income from your expenditure. Enemies to financial independence. So the biggest hurdle that most of you will face is a mindset problem. Now, if you're going to do well financially, you need a very strong mind to rise above these mindset hindrances. Number one is the consumption focus. Everything that you think about to make you feel good about yourself has to do with expenditure. And it has absolutely nothing to do with how financially independent you are. Being financially independent is not a cool thing. In the short term, it is more appealing and so most of you focus on that. Now, if you don't change your focus from consumption, facing financial independence is going to be a very long journey for you. Number two, because you want to please others. Financial independence is in the background. We ask someone puts it. You use money you don't have, buy things you don't need. These people who don't care about you. And it's a tragedy. Now, another thing that is going to be a hindrance to your financial independence is excessive borrowing. You have to watch your borrowing, especially borrowing to consume. Borrowing money to put in a a business or to invest is different from borrowing money to consume, you know, but that's one of the worst things. So beyond the mindset thing, the next thing that you need to deal with is procrastination. Some of you, you've been on too many webinars, but now you should have started something, but you still need someone to think that you are. Number three is excuses. Number one excuse that I hear is I don't earn enough. You will never earn enough because as your income increases, so will your lifestyle adjust. So you will never have excess money. The trick is that you save first and you spend what is left after you invest. Now, if you want to invest what is left after you've spent, there'll be nothing left for you to invest. So you put away some of the money first and let your lifestyle be determined by what is left. And number four is blame. Failing to take responsibility. You blame the family in which you come from. Well, what are the steps that you have to take? The overriding principle is do the simple, sensible thing consistently over a long period of time. And you will be fine. Now, the rest, we are going to talk about the details of the things that you want to do. Now, if you're only going to take two or three of these details and do it consistently over a long period of time, be much better off than one who tries to do everything and that's it for a short period and it's not possible. So the overriding thing that you need to take away from this is that if you want to be financially independent, it's a journey, it's not a sprint. You have to do simple, sensible things consistently over a long period of time. Now, what are some of the things that you have to learn to do? You have to learn to budget. What are the most important things that you need to spend on? You don't just spend money and you start spending and let the future take care of itself. Learn to budget and live according to your budget. Set financial goals and plans. Now, if you don't have a plan, then any journey will take you there. 
You don't know where you are going. Every journey looks like a good journey. If you set your goals and you know where you are going, you are consistent and you follow the path. Consistently live on less than you earn. This is a very important point. It doesn't look sexy, but if you don't learn to do this, you are going to have a hard time in your life. If you want to live larger, increase your cash flow. But all the time, you have to ensure that your lifestyle is determined by a maximum of 80% of your earnings. For those of you here who are single, you should be talking about 60 50 percent of your earnings because believe you me when you have a family and the rest if you're struggling to let your cash flow your income sustain your life now then i don't know what you're going to do when you have a family so minimum you're putting aside 20 percent of your income in savings if you are a tighter then we, well we are talking about 30 percent here 10 percent goes to god 20 percent goes into your savings account you live on 70 percent of what invest all windfalls now a windfall is money that you did not project to it's not part of your budget. Now, most of us tend to waste this kind of money. If you do not plan, you got the money. Then live your life as if the money did not Take the windfalls and put the windfalls out. I can tell you that personally, this is one of the things that changed my financial life significantly. When I was working in the bank and everybody was living a lavish lifestyle, all the monies that came in excess of the regular to pay you 25% of your annual gross as rent supplement. When I take the money, I didn't look at this face to be tempted. Immediately, the money comes and goes straight into my investment. I did all those things. The teaching I was doing on the side, all those actions all went in a separate account. If you're able to do that consistently, you will do well financially. Diversify your investment. Find good places to put your money, but don't put all your money in just one good place that you find. Find multiple investment vehicles and put your money in there. All of them, by your estimation, must be good, but don't limit yourself on Seek multiple streams of income. Don't limit yourself just to your pay. Seek to make multiple streams of income. Your extra income should be coming from your investment account. And do not take excessive risks. It is better to make reasonable returns consistently over a long period of time than to make 200% on a certain amount of money. And then the next period, you will lose that entire amount. It is better to make reasonable returns consistently and compound this over a long period of time. If you are a natural aggressive risk taker, limit that your excessive risk taking to maximum of 10% of your investment portfolio. If possible, just avoid excessive risk.